and welcome to Bali for those of you who sacrificed your emissions and who decided not to come. We're giving you an e a nightly roundup of some of the events that happened during the day. And last night we featured the views and perspectives of two journalists from developing countries. And tonight we're looking at a report by Oxfam that was unveiled today to get maximum impact at the Bali conference. The, the report is on adaptation, uh, which is part of the jargon you have to learn if you're going to take part in a conversation at Bali. Um, and here to explain what adaptation is about and why Oxfam decided to do a report on it is uh, Marita Huchis of Oxfam. Hi. <laughs> and uh, I want to start by asking you why Oxfam is involved in climate change at all, because for a lot of people I think Oxfam means relief, development, whatever you call it, not climate change. So why is it involved? Well, the simple answer is climate change is a development issue. And why? Because uh, climate change has the most impact on the poorest countries. Uh, we now know that uh, the effects of climate change are going to be the biggest changes in tropical regions where the majority of the countries are developing countries, but even more so the poorest in those countries, uh, they suffer the most of the impact because they have the least means to cope with uh, the effects like, for instance, increased droughts, longer drought periods, or um, heavier rains, or even um, uh, tornadoes. So uh, to us, it's a development issue from that angle. And finally, also, it's a development um, issue because actually it can push people into poverty even more than uh, they are in. Mm -hmm. So instead of getting out of poverty, it pushes them back in. And, well, we as a development organization have been working for years to get people out of poverty. So, yes, that's why we are campaigning on climate change to make sure that we can continue to keep people out of poverty. Yes. So so, for you, develop, uh, climate change is a development issue? Yes, for us, climate change is absolutely yeah. a development issue. But the, the, as I understand it, the amount of money that's been promised so far is, I think Oxfam called it, insultingly small, very, very small sums of money. So, why do you, are you confident that people are prepared to to get the insults they've given and give and promise more money, has the climate of opinion changed? Yes, the climate of opinion has also changed in terms of um, that now the estimates are becoming, let's say, more realistic in terms of what's actually needed. What has been pledged in the past is, you know, several million of uh, I'm sorry, a hundred millions of dollars, which is absolutely not enough. Uh, we have done uh, our own calculations. Sorry to interrupt you, but one of the uh, uh, things in the Oxfam report, I, I, I made a note of it because for journalists, this is the sort of material you want to read. It said that le the, the money you pledged so far to help the world's poorest to adapt to climate change is less than the Americans spend on suntan lotion in one month. Is this true? <laughs> Well, that's what the figures say. You only need to read the report and also the other figures. For instance, from my country, the Netherlands, it's, it's the amount of money that the Dutch government has given until this moment is about the same amount of money as Dutch people spend every two months on car stereos. So, yes, those figures are true. Yes. Um, the Dutch probably have very high quality car stereos. But, uh. yes. <laughs> um, but, okay, we, we calculated what we think uh, is necessary, and we came up with a figure in which we said that at least $50 billion a year is needed. We are, there are also others who are saying that these type of amounts of money are actually needed, like for instance, uh, Sir Stern has said it, that we are in the right ballpark. The, the UNDP, the United Nations Development Program, has uh, brought out a report last week. They are also in those types of figures. So there is the acknowledgement that actually we need to talk about those amounts of money. Um, 
that's there. Now the second step is actually generating the amount of money. What is, what, what's blocking the generation or the promise of more money? Uh, and I just want to, sorry to butt in, this is a, a message from the sponsors here, <laughs> to say that this is, uh, you're watching, you know you're watching on Second Life, it's, it's a one world Second Life transmission. Uh, this is uh, Marisa Huchis from Oxfam, and who, Oxfam has just published a report on adaptation. And um, Marisa, yes, I hope, just going to explain what it is. If more money is needed, the climate of opinion seems to be swinging in some northern countries that they will give more, that this is a genuine case. But presumably not everybody is convinced. Some governments or some peoples are slow still to give money. Why would they not want to? What, what is blocking the way politically or financially or whatever reasons they give? Yeah. Okay, again to give an example from my country, the Netherlands. Uh, my government has already said publicly the that they believe uh, my government that, uh, adaptation funding should be additional to development aid. And that actually it is a form of compensatory payment that we're not talking about development aid at all. Um, but what is blocking is what you normally get when you talk about money. Because when you talk about money, people have to well, draw their purses, whomever it is. And then you know, people start arguing about the amount that it actually is and how it should be done. And well, other things like, is it going to be well spent? So those are the types of blockages that you see, uh, which, which a lot of them have to do with political will of actually acknowledging, yes, that it's also going to cost money.